welcome today to Ask a Pastor. I'm joined by Dan Irvin and Jeanette Klein. Dan is uh, the leader of Young Life for North Allegheny School District and beyond uh, and does a great job with students. Is also a, a longtime part of Orchard Hill. I think you were around Orchard Hill as a student back in the day. Is that right? Before you kind of um, went off to college? Yeah, I, it was probably going back to middle school for me, late 90s, early 2000s. Okay, me. awesome. Then went to uh, University of Toledo, led Young Life there, and then moved back to the area. has been part of Orchard Hill since. And yeah. then Jeanette Klein as well. Jeanette is part of our student ministry staff team uh, at Orchard Hill. And Jeanette's been around Orchard Hill probably uh, less than a year at this point. But um, he's done a great job with uh, student ministry here. And so um, I thought it would be good today just to bring both of uh, Dan and Jeanette in to talk a little bit about where is God during this pandemic. But first, let me ask you, what have you guys been doing for fun or amusement during quarantine? Good one. You got anything, Dan? Go ahead. Yeah, fun. I mean, it's all fun, right? We're, we're quarantined. <laughs> I think, um, I mean, I've been finding new ways to, uh, to entertain my three kids. That, that's fun and challenging in itself. Um, you know, just, just getting outside whenever we can. Um, I like to run a little bit when I can get some quiet moments by myself. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's been fun at times. <laughs> okay, what, what's the main entertainment with your three kids? How old are your three kids again? Eight, eight, five, and two. So a lot of bike rides, they're on their scooters around the neighborhood. We have a great neighborhood for that. Um, in the backyard, wiffle ball, you know, anything, anything to get them moving. All right. Very good. I've been, uh, I have three of my sons are living at home plus another uh, young adult. We've been playing a ton of wiffle ball. And it's been, uh, they've realized that they're making a bad example for the younger kids in the neighborhood because they argue over just about everything. <laughs> but, um, but yes, wiffle ball has been big this spring in our house. So, so Jeanette, what have you been doing just for fun during this time? Uh, I've been getting outside a lot, doing some running. It was kind of funny. We, I got this virtual 5K thing sent to me, and it was like a Bigfoot social distancing 5K. So I actually just ran that um, with my sister and her husband and a friend. We were all very much separated, mainly because my pace is much slower than everyone else's. But um, doing a lot of running, and then uh, I decided to try to teach myself how to play the guitar. So I've been working on that. Can't say my skills have come a long way, but we're working on it. Need to practice right. on it. <laughs> That's taking self-improvement during a quarantine, seriously. Man, I'm just going to pick up the guitar during, during this time. Well, good. Well, you guys both work with students, and um, I would imagine that, you know, the reactions from students to kind of this whole thing are all over the place from it's a political conspiracy and, you know, free Pennsylvania to, um, you know, I'm really disappointed that my school trip got canceled or this happened, prom, you know, all those kinds of things. Um, but I, I would guess that it's also an opportunity to talk with people, especially students, about where is God in the world, especially when things like this happen. So what kinds of questions have you heard from students? And then how have you reacted to the questions that, that you're hearing them pose? Go ahead, Jeanette. I wasn't sure if you were going to go. Um, I think something, and it actually links back to, in Collide, we did a talk just in January, um, going back to the idea or the question of, well, why would God let this happen? Or how could a good God let something like this happen? Um, and so that just really opens up the opportunity to talk about the character of God and what that looks like. Um, and just a couple of examples that I know for me, because I mean, I process through this every time as well. It's, it's, it's at a deeper level each time, but breaking it down and just simplifying it to the basic fact of like, this is not the world that God intended and created in the beginning. Um, and just how we see in Genesis, how when God said that he created everything, that it was good. Um, and the fact that, that we live in just a fallen and a broken world, and we see the effects of sin in the world that we live in. 
Um, but going back to even just God and his character, how God is a God of love. And just that idea of love is not just a fleeting feeling of, I feel good right now, but it's a choice. And in order for us to experience God's love, like that idea of that we were created with a choice and we can choose to love and follow God and, and, and live how he created us to, or we could choose to disobey and, and to go another way and to turn from him and rebel. And and we see in Genesis as well that like we we decided to do that, and there are consequences for sin, and, and we feel the effects of that in the world that we live in. And just going back to the idea of this is not how God intended it. Like this is a broken world that we live in. Um, but that's why the gospel and 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 the hope that we have it just points straight back to Jesus. And, um, and gives us hope that like he's fixing it and, and it's not something that God is just sitting up there going oh my word like yeah I'm like I'm, I'm, I'm ticked at them and, and, and they're gonna suffer through this like that, that's not his heart and when we see God's heart when we see his character and you see that reflected like all through scripture um, he's a God of love and compassion and and we see how he can take terrible situations and bring good out of them um, and even in the, in the, in the cross with Jesus, like we see one of the most difficult situations where, um, probably one of the, the worst events in human history happened and Jesus was crucified on the cross. And yet God used that to bring about the best thing in the history of the world. Um, and that opportunity for us for salvation. And so just, just all of the conversations, honestly, have just been pointing back to the gospel of this isn't how God created it, how he loves us, how his character, when you when you start to see and truly understand his character in it, you can really see his heart and the love that he has for us. Okay. And what if a, if a student kind of pushes back on the idea of saying, well, okay, so you're saying that, that we live in a broken world and because of that we have a pandemic. Um, in essence, but why does God let it be so indiscriminate that both, you know, people of faith, people not of faith are all experiencing the same kind of hardship through it? Yeah. I'll go ahead, Dan. Yeah, no, I, to your point, Jeanette, I mean, I think that, you know, that we, understanding and, and kids are, kids are really honest in my experience about the questions they have that, you know, they, they are, wondering you know is god heartbroken with us i think you know um you know what good can possibly come out of this if this wasn't god's original plan you know to your point jeanette then then why is why is he allowing this um you know i it's it's a different conversation with every student and with every person but i think the the heart for for me it's it's helping it's entering into the suffering with with people and, and understanding that there's deeper, you know, some kids are looking for a logical explanation just because they want to know. And some kids are really struggling because they're experiencing loss. They're experiencing their families going through a hard time financially. They're experiencing, you know, social isolation in, in a really challenging way for the first time. And, um, you know, I, I think I was listening to, I think it was a Tim Keller sermon recently where he was talking about you know, just because we can't think of a good reason for God to allow suffering doesn't mean there isn't a good reason that God would allow suffering. You know, it's, um, you know, that's, that's short-sighted on our part as human beings to think that, well, just because we can't figure it out doesn't mean that, that God doesn't have it figured out. Um, but it's still, it's still really, really difficult, hard question. Okay. What other questions, Dan, have you heard uh, some of the kids uh, kind of talking about and, um, you know, they're, uh, have they, I guess, posed to you and what else have you been able to respond with? Yeah, various, you know, I think, honestly, I think that it's, sometimes it's hard to get down to the heart of, you know, they're just mad, they're just angry, they're angry, things have been canceled, they're angry that their, their world has been, you know, interrupted a little bit, which I, I can relate to all of that. Uh, you know, I, th I think, a lot of the questions get back to, you know, why didn't he, why didn't he just put an end to this, you know, kind of, kind of right away, you know, when it, when it started happening, why couldn't God and in his infinite powers, infinite, you know, strength, just stop, stop it. Um, you know, and again, it, it goes back to this, 
you know, bigger picture view of the world that, that God sees. God sees in full what we can only see in part. Um, it's, it's a hard thing to understand. It's, it's something that, you know, I've wrestled with and will continue to wrestle with, but it's, uh, you know, as we trust God and know God's character more, I think, uh, it becomes a little easier to, to know that even, even when things don't make sense, uh, that God loves us and, uh, he is, he's for us. Yeah. And just to kind of add on to that a little bit, um, one of the things that we've talked about with the kids is to, to that point of, um, we kind of made this analogy of um, like, you're finally out and quarantine's over and you're finally able to hang out with your friends and you're so excited and like the championship games are back on and life is like resumed as you know it. And then out of nowhere, I just come flying in and I tackle you and like I pummel you to the ground and I break your arm. I'm like, was that a loving act? And they're like, no. I'm like, well, okay, like push pause right there. Like if you were just to push pause there, would you trust me in the future? Would you, if you didn't actually know me and if you didn't actually know my character, would you trust me? Would you want to be around me? Would you want to have anything to do with me? And they're like, absolutely not, no. Um, but then we push play again and we see, and it, it's kind of like abstract, bizarre, but I'm like, there's these piano movers and they're in the second story and there's this piano and it is about to crush you. And I run and I tackle you out of the way and I break your arm and I took you out of the championship game, but I just saved your life. I saved you from being completely crushed. Now was that a loving act? And they're like, well, yeah, like absolutely. And it's that same idea. I was trying to parallel it. That's the same idea with God of sometimes I feel like in our life, God has this kind of what I like to call like a loving tackle where it might seem in the moment, you're like, what the heck is going on? God, like, why would you do that? Why would you let this happen? And what we can't see is that there's this piano that is about to crush us. But the loving tackle serves to kind of, you know, get us, moving down a different track and the idea of like even I know I've actually really enjoyed studying Joel recently and and figuring things out with the kids as we've worked through it but just even the idea in Joel of with the plagues that came and why would God do that but the Israelites they were headed towards destruction and Romans 6 23 tells us that the wages of sin is death they weren't living with God and that's the path that they were headed down mm -hmm. and that idea like if God had not come in and sent that locust plague would they have changed their direction? Most likely not. And so even the locust flag, I'm like, that could have served like as a loving tackle from God to like get their attention from greater destruction or something worse that would have happened down the road. And so when we look at that too, like we see God's heart and I think verses 12 and 13 of that idea of like his desire is for them to repent and how he is gracious and merciful and compassionate and relents from sending calamity. Like we see his heart and his heart and all of that is that we would return, that we would come back to him. And so I think sometimes God can use difficult situations to get us to wake up, to get us to like, wait, what is going on right now? And to call out to him and, and to save us from what could be, you know, a worse, worse judgment at the end or separation from him, which which is ultimately the worst. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of been some of my explanations to the kids where I've been looking at this and there's different ways to explain it and to kind of link things. But to me, that's always the, like, why would God let this happen to me? Like, why would God let this difficult situation in my life? Um, Cause I even know like whenever I was growing up, like I can relate to them. Like my mother um, got cancer and she passed away whenever I was in seventh grade. And it's that like, why? Like, God, like if you really are a loving God and you could heal, why wouldn't you heal your child who was asking for it? And I wrestled through that for a really long time. I'm like, God, like why? But looking back as an adult, it's one of those things where like I can look back and see how God used like my mother and her testimony and how that affected the doctors and the nurses, how it affected like my life choices and me even getting into missions and going on missions trips and working with kids. Like those are all a direct result of the circumstances that were in my life that happened. Um, and a family member who came to know the Lord recently due to, I think mainly my mother's illness and how she handled it and just seeing how 
God is at work even in the midst of those situations when it doesn't make sense to us, when we're, we feel like we're in the middle of a tackle and we're like, God, what are you doing? Yeah, when you, when you know his heart, when you know his character, even though it doesn't make sense, how we can trust him. Yeah, well, that's well put. I like the image of the loving tackle. Um, Dan, what, what, uh, what have you been able to see in that or how have you been able to relate some of those same things to people? Yeah, no, Jeanette, that was good. I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I think back to, you know, some of my hardest moments, um, you know, as a husband or a spouse and, and recently in some of the heartache that, that my, my wife and I have experienced over the years and, it, you know, in those moments, um, you know, I wouldn't wish, I wouldn't wish those moments upon anyone, you know, they were painful, hard moments, you know, but years removed from, from those, you know, episodes, I can, I can say that without those moments of, of trial and, and suffering, I wouldn't be who I am today. We wouldn't be who we are as a couple. Our kids wouldn't be who they are. You know, um, God was doing something in the midst of, of really hard moments, but I couldn't, I couldn't see it at the time. You know, I was just in pain and, and hurting and suffering. Uh, but, but now I, I wouldn't trade those moments and I, I wouldn't wish them upon anyone, but I wouldn't trade them. I wouldn't go back and say, Oh, I wish those didn't happen. Um, because I know that, that they've, uh, produced character and perseverance, you know, all the things that, that James talks about, um, in his letter, uh, yeah, and I, I think that's that's a that's an important thing as as you know we try to communicate with with kids and students that um, you know it is it is okay to be to be suffering right now if if you're suffering and to lament and to to experience hard moments and to know and to hopefully trust that that God is at work and and doing something that's that's much bigger than we could ever see and and even imagine um, you know going on right now um, that He is behind the scenes and He He's working um, for us, and um, even even when it doesn't make any sense. So, how do you help somebody get a perspective of God's character, so that when the loving tackle comes, the hard times come, they can say, "Oh, even if I can't see it or feel it today, I can trust that God's character is for me." How how, how do you get that perspective, rather than waiting till you're in the middle of the loving tackle to all of a sudden say, "I'm not sure." Mm-hmm. Good question. I think, you know, we want that for the people that we love, the students that we know, our friends that that we know, and that we want them to understand and, and realize that. And it's it's hard when they don't. Um, you know, I I think the only the only way that I've ever known that that can be possible is to uh, is to really know and trust God on a deep level, like you know, like Jeanette said, like it's this it's this level of understanding and trusting someone that that can only come from um, deep, you know, intimate communion with, with the God of the Bible. And, and, you know, it can't be, it can't be just something that someone tells you that, you know, if someone walks up to you on the street and be like, Hey, you should trust that person over there in the red coat. Uh, chances are you probably won't trust that person over there in the red coat because you probably don't know who they are and you don't know the person on the street telling you to do it. But if someone who is trusted in your life, a friend of yours say, Hey, I think you should get to know, uh, this person, Jesus, and and learn how to trust them and love them and uh, and give your life to them. Uh, you you might listen because you know that person who's telling you to do that. And then once you start to enter into that you know journey with that relationship with Jesus, uh, you begin to trust and hope in God in a different way and and put your hope in Him instead of uh, maybe some things that the world has to offer. Good, Jeanette. Anything to add to that about how to? kind of get to know that character so that you trust it when you do encounter a hard time? Yeah. Um, and it, it's kind of hard because for me, when I've come to know God's character has always been in the hard time. Um, like it's, it, it's one of those, like even in James, how like you're, you learn and you learn and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I believe this about God, but it's when I'm in the hard times, it's like, do I really believe that about God? Um, but one of the things that I always love and that really helps me is that as like Dan was saying, like as you spend time with somebody, you get to know them and you get to know what they're like and you get to know what they're not like. And it's the same thing with God of I can't expect to just know him because someone told me about him. I know him because I spend time getting to know him. I spend time in his word and I spend time in prayer 
And as you read the scriptures, like God reveals himself to you, like it's clear who he is. Um, but I love because even, even looking at the hard things sometimes that we're asked to do, where you have like the loving tackle or you're going through something difficult and we often plead like, God, like take this away from this, take this away from us or change this, is that God never asks us to do anything that like he hasn't himself done. And even looking at, at Jesus on the cross, like Jesus said, like, God, if there is any other way, like, please take this cup from me. And then he says, not my will, but yours. And he just submitted to the will of the Father. He yielded to the Father's will. And God was glorified in that. And that brought about salvation for everyone. And, and Jesus faced suffering. Jesus faced death. Jesus went through all of the things that we might ever go through in this life. And, and it's one of those ideas of that we serve a God who who is relatable, who relates to us. And when we search the scriptures, when we get to see how Jesus, how even Jesus went through that suffering, how did he pass through that? Um, I think it really shows you a lot of God's character and his heart and what he really is truly like. And then that grows to the point where I can actually trust what I'm being told because I can see it and you start to live it out. It's part of your life. That's very helpful. Well, thank you. What are you each looking forward to most when quarantine comes to an end? Hugging people. <laughs> <laughs> Hugging people. The, like, the distance part of just being able to hug and not have to worry about, oh, am I going to get you sick? <laughs> yeah, it's a little yeah. weird to um, meet people and be like, hey, from a distance. Yes. <laughs> I yeah. think... Uh, Mass crowds, Kurt, large, large events, lots of people. I'm the type of person I want to, if I have a party, I want to invite everyone I've ever met in my life. My wife always makes fun of me for that, but I just, you know, all the people all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, um, definitely if you're extroverted, um, this has been a challenging time to be um, not able to be with a lot of people or just see people in a, in a general way. Well, thank you, Dan and Jeanette. We appreciate you both being a part of this. And again, if you have questions, please send them to askapastoratorchardhillchurch.com. We'll be happy to address them uh, on a coming episode. Have a great day. Thanks, guys.